Folks, we're in for a treat. We're always in for a treat when this, when this man comes and, and graces us with his presence. Not only is he an extraordinarily inspirational speaker, but what I think he does more importantly is he sets the example of walking his talk and expressing exactly who he has come to be. Please welcome our dear friend and my brother, Kumu Ramsey Tom. Thank you. Hello, my Kako. E holokono no kekino ame kao hane. E maalama pono kamana ke ola ke kino. E kamana va apa aloha 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 no ai kako aloha. You know, in those words, they ring true to the things we just talked about. We sang about about unity. In the opening phrase, it says, "E holokono no ke kino ame kao hane unify." Mind, body, and spirit. Connect them. Become connected. Mind, body, and spirit. This is to be ponno, to be in alignment with all that is us, all that is you, all that is around us. I am you, you are me. The second part, e maalama ponno, kamana o keola, ke kino, e kamana va paolo. It says unify mind, body, and spirit, but nurture, care for. Aloha, love that connection through all time. Not just while we're here today, but when we leave. They were always connected. We're all connected. And so I mahalo you all for inviting me back to share in these thoughts um, today about Ho'ala. When I was invited to come, uh, as always, I have to pull it on it because there's so much going on in our world today. So much to think about, so much to say, so much to share. And so as I, I pull it, I ask for guidance on this. This concept of Ho'ala came up. Ho'ala. Everyone say Ho'ala. Yeah, Ho'ala means to rise or awaken. So let me ask, when you woke up this morning, maybe that's too leading. When you opened your eyes this morning, did you just get up or did you awaken? Did you get up or did you awaken? Really, I ask that because there are a lot of people walking around who's still sleeping. <laughs> They're not necessarily awake yet, you know? And many of us may have gotten up many years ago, but we are still living in the dark. Many of us are still sleeping at the wheel. And so I thought it was appropriate that as we begin to see the times of change, we are changing, wouldn't you say? Things are changing, as they say. And so Ho'ala became a guiding theme, a thought for today. When we look at the term Ho'ala in Hawaiian culture, the language of my kupuna, there is this notion that there is a root to fruit. Every Hawaiian word has a root word or concept. And so when you say Ho'a, the word Ho'a means to turn on. Like to turn on a light, to flip the switch, if you would. Hoa, to turn on. Everyone say the word ah. Ah. Hanaho, ah. Ah Ah is to call upon that life giving energy we call God. It is a universal heat energy, it is a universal life energy that our brothers and sisters all over the island earth have acknowledged with Yahweh, Allah, Ra, Atta. La, Kala. This is the life-giving energy of the sun that shines down upon us, feeds the plants that feed us. We find it in the word for Hawaiian medicine, La'au, Lapa'au, La'au, the sun that is captured in the plant so that we can eat it, the au, to consume God's energy in us. La'au. 
the awe energy of God. Then there is the word Allah. Allah is the pathway. But Allah also means to awaken, to rise up. Now in between there, I don't have it on the slide, but there's the term O. Everyone say O. O is the foundation or the basis, the base for something. The base of life, the basics, yeah. And then the last concept, la, which I've already referred to. La is the sun, as in ka, la, that travels across the sky. So ho Allah is to awaken with the sun, to follow it and face it. But more importantly, to allow it to shine from within because the basis for change, the basis for awakening is rooted in awe, in keakua, in God. Ho Allah, to awaken to that. Now, why is this important message? Because we are actually on the cusp of change. I didn't realize it at the time when I said, I, sure, I will come. That tomorrow, today is the shift. Tomorrow we enter the vernal equinox, the spring equinox. This is half, half, half dark, half light. This is the time when we shift from one season to the next, from the winter season to the spring season. This is the cusp of change. Now, I acknowledge quickly that we are not just on the cusp of change in the seasons of nature, but we are also on the cusp of change in the season of mankind. The spirit of man, our attitudes, our mental states, our emotional states, they also change with the seasons. And we are in a new season. As mature as we may think we may be, it is clearly that we are still operating with some adolescent aspirations. <laughs> and unfortunately, we have chosen those who lead by those examples. And in this cusp of change, we are shifting from one period to the next. And the question is, what will guide us in this next season? Will it be the aspirations guided by maturity or will we hold on to the anxieties and fears of adolescence? We are on the cusp of change. The seasons are changing, as they say. And so I'd offer that this is an opportunity for us to recognize that there are old and new ways, different ways, if you would, but we have an old season. And I'd suggest that the season that we are coming out of has been a long recognized, perhaps unconsciously, as a season of dualism. Dualism. And in this season of dualism, unfortunately, it's either black or white. We have created a line for some reason. Somehow we've reduced everything to a competition. A, co a competition of either or. Something that is opposites. Here's the metaphor. Everyone knows it. What's the metaphor here? What is it? Half full, half empty. Everybody knows it means either optimism or pessimism. Depending on what your perspective is. And it's interesting because if you ask a person which it is, perhaps they reveal a little of themselves. We reveal ourselves in our answers. I heard one comedian say the difference between it being half full or half empty depends on whether you're pouring or you're drinking. It is a perspective. <laughs> but I'll extend that further because actually if it is, and we do subscribe to that notion that we're either pouring or we're drinking, then we could easily say that maybe we are also giving and taking. See, this is one of those axioms of dualism, to give and take. Have you heard that before? Oh, this is about give and take, right? We recognize that some of us, perhaps even Mother Earth, has been giving and we keep taking. Where is the balance in that, to give and take? And it requires us then to reflect on our own relationships with one another, our places around us, and the glass that we call our life. And how much in our lives are we pouring, are we drinking? And it's okay to do both. 
what really it becomes of what is our focus. Is it either or? Are we prepared to continue living in the season of black and white, left or right, good and evil, right or wrong, or light and dark? Clearly, it's one or the other. Competition that no longer helps us aspire to the best that we can be by challenging ourselves with those who are better and stronger. Instead, our competition is focused on obliterating the enemy. Everyone is an enemy. In order for us to win, there must be a loser. I can't lose unless you win. I can't win unless you lose. Competition is not about improving ourselves, but competition is about destroying those who would challenge us to be better. It's a new season. At least I hope it is. Because I don't know that we can continue traveling down that road of adolescence. Because as we move from light to dark in this time of change, there is a term for that. It's called enlightenment. In the Hawaiian term for enlightenment, it is a'o or a'o. Education, knowledge, and wisdom. The no'o, no'o, the awareness, the understanding. Ah, again, that life, God, energy founded in all the basics of understanding. Oh, is to understand, yeah? is to be enlightened, to become aware. How many of you remember when we first became enlightened? Yeah, there was a story. Because first there came Eve. She brought us the apple of enlightenment. Several years later came Steve. <laughs> Eve and Steve, they both brought us an apple. And we became enlightened. Maybe. Because in an enlightenment, one, when Eve gave us the apple, we found and saw our nakedness, our exposures. And now with Steve's apple, we can see others' nakedness and exposures. I'm not sure how far we've come from being enlightened because I'm I'm reminded that Moses brought us the iPad, the original tablets. <laughs> and today we still use the tablets. <laughs> now, I may not be the first person to acknowledge this relationship. In fact, I found an old ancient drawing of Steve and Eve together many, many years ago. Yeah. There they are. <laughs> now, what's interesting about this analogy, yeah? is that the Garden of Eden, much like our own home here, Hawaii, yeah, could be in better places or worse places. We're in the best place it could be. But because there was a covenant broken, there was banishment. God banished us from this Garden of Eden. And here we are, generations later, because we are kanaka, humans, naka, to shake, to stand, We have turned the tables now, haven't we? Because now we are banishing God from our temples, our homes, and our classes. Hulli ho! Somehow the season has changed. Banishment. How far have we come since the first tablets? Banished from the garden, and now we banish people from our places. The season of change. The question is, when we ate the apple, we found our authentic selves. And we weren't prepared for that. And so today, we still embrace, in fact, chase after the inauthentic self. Many of us don't know who we are because we rely on the opinions of others. And to look into the mirror and to see ourselves oftentimes frightens us especially when others see us more clearly than we see ourselves. In fact, this thing, how many of you have one of them? So, yeah, you turn it on in the morning. Before anything else comes on, what do you see? Yourself. It's a reflection. The iPad. (laughs) The iPhone. The new temple that I can pray to. Yeah? 
because the first thing I see is myself. These are the new temples, right? The question is, how do we go beyond it? How do we get past the looking glass so we can begin to really capture the wisdom that is there for us? In this world of dualism, we are constantly challenged to ask ourselves what is real, what is true, what is false. We have cousins who are in the Pacific, in Tuvalu, in the lands where the waters are around their ankles. We have animals. They are our relatives. These relatives in the Arctic that can no longer find land. And we are debating whether or not that is true or false. All we have to do is look. You don't have to ask. But why are we debating it? What are we debating? What are we afraid of? What can we rely on? Is it real? Is it fake? You turn on the news. You listen to the radio. Open the paper. Can you trust what you see? Can you, who can you trust? What can you trust? We are coming out of a season of distrust. How did we go from faith to this place of fear and anxiety? Faith or fear. Look at that little bird sitting there in the jaws of death with a faith that all he has to do is do his job, do it well. How many of us would have the faith to be able to do that? And yet know that every time you get in the car, you do that because that's just a little line. Most of us don't know the other guy on the other side of the road. He's coming down. I have full faith that he's going to drive his car on his side of the line. The little line becomes our trust. And yet we don't trust one another. We've become a community of fear and anxiety. Don't you say? I mean, every time I open the paper, that's all I hear. I don't hear anything about faith anymore. I see only fear, more fear, every day. And yet we live in one of the beautiful, most beautiful places in the world. Others may be in darkness, but we are in light constantly, and yet we too are challenged by these fears. How do we get there? How has it become, once again, about fences and walls, to block people out, to throw them out, to get rid of them? How do we get there, especially here in this land of Aloha? This island called Earth could easily be the same, but for some reason, we continue to subscribe to the adolescence of fear. Perhaps some of it is because we have become so accustomed to artificial time rather than natural time. There is a different way of this, the artificial time. I have to be here. I have to be there. Mind you, uh, I may be aware I'm not immune I may be aware I'm not immune. I am face chasing the clock too sometimes. And I have to ask myself, what is that? How do we get back to this natural time? The time that is true to who we are. So when we look to the way our kupuna, our kupuna didn't see it as black and white. It's all a series of gray. Everything is changing. And it wasn't so much about right or wrong as much it is about what is appropriate. What is ponno? See, ponno means what's appropriate right now because under this moon, this moon, we are moving from the time of Ole Kupau. And under this moon, you don't do certain things. Where three days ago, we could. Well, under the next moon, we're going to call it Kaloa Kukahi. Kaloa is the compression of the word Kanaloa. And we begin a new cycle. There are three of these moons in Kaloa. And when we're guided by these moons, we know when to plant, we know when to fish. We know, when, we know when to build, we know when to clean. We are coming out of the time of cleaning and preparing for the next season. This is where we are. But what's appropriate today may not be appropriate three days from now, and yet we lock ourselves into behavior that is constant and find ourselves working against ourselves in many ways because we are no longer vibrating at natural time, but artificial time. And relying on that which is false to interpret to us what is true. Therein lies perhaps the pilikia, the hakaka, the huki huki, the tension. And so we would ask, kaloa kukahi, the beginning, the first, what do we do now? We clean, we get ready. This is the month, according to our kupuna, of nana or nana. Everybody say nana. Na -na. This is March. 
And so nana also means to observe, to watch. In Hawaiian, we say, ikanana no ike. By observing, we learn. Pay attention. This, as we learn at the end of this cycle, is the end of the wet season. As we move into the dry season, we plant, we clean, we get ready to harvest, we do all this wonderful stuff. But this is the time, as my kupuna and friend Kahu Lion says, a time when nature is full of animation. We become alive. There is vigor of the life plants, growth, living in all things. The baby birds leave their nests. The earth this month is beautiful and green. Ah, that's why I want to agree. Yeah. Got to be in alignment with natural time. The end of the wet season, the beginning of the dry season. Natural time. But there is an olelo no eao that also supports this. It says, Nana kamaka ho'olohe ke pepeao pa'akawa. Open the eyes, open the ears, close the mouth. Can I listen when you're talking? In fact, sometimes I think maybe our eyes should be closer to our mouth that we can watch what we say. <laughs> think about it. Explain that to the next guy. You know, in case. <laughs> you know, I'm reminded because today we live in a time where people are too quick to speak or tweet. <laughs> Sounds same. But you know, there, there is another olelo no eao that speaks to that. It says, Ika olelo no keola, ika olelo nakamake. In the language is life, in the language is death. When you speak something, you can kill someone's heart, their spirit, their mind. Or you can enlighten and, and, and bring them up, encourage them just by the words. Ika olelo no keola, lift them up. And yet we continue to hear these other things, these words that tend not to lift, but intend to suppress. It's time for a new season. It's a time for us to olelo ola. Ke ola, lift with our words of wisdom. Yeah? Ho Allah. Everyone say ho Allah. ho Allah. Time to wake up. It's time to wake up. We've been asleep too long. The slumber has caught up with us, and it's now time for us to rise up. E ala e, to rise up. This is a picture of me and my students. We entered and went to the sea at the beginning of the old season. This was the winter solstice. And we greeted the sun and woke ourselves up as we woke up the sun with e ala e, e ala e, e ala e, calling upon the sun. Rise up, awaken. As it comes from the east and rises from the ocean, and climbs to the highest heights of the heavens, as it rises, we rise. There is the sun within us. The new season begins. We are on that cusp of change. It is a new season of many hands. It is a new season of many spirits. It's a new season of many minds coming together. Not fractured, but coming together. Where else can we do this if not here in Hawaii? Auntie Morna Nalamaku Sumiyuna said, If you see the problems in the world, know that they start here with you first. The problems in the world are problems within you. For when you see the splinter in someone else's eye, the log is in your own. The new season begins with us. How we change. So we move from the season of dualism to the season of mutualism. Another word for that is unity. Coming together. Because when I look at these images, for the lion to lie with the swine, you could call them friend or foe or friend and food, I don't know. 
But if they can do it, why can't we? What's holding us back from embracing one another like that? Yes, there are people that might want to hurt us, but perhaps it's because we have not embraced them in a way. And perhaps their training and taught has been fear. They continue to live, but do we have to continue living that way? Do we need to keep perpetuating that fear and to live in a world of adolescence that believes in fighting rather than loving? I don't think so. I think we need to be cautious, yes. But building a wall is not an answer, especially a wall that starts here. They don't have any walls, and yet they are able to lie together. So maybe, maybe this new season is about looking at this glass in a different way. To shift the paradigm from one of fear and anxiety to one of aloha. Because when we can look at this glass with aloha, we realize that the top or the bottom heart part is filled with vai. The upper part is filled with ha, the ha and the vai. And the light that travels through it constantly is e. Ha vai e. The glass is always full when you look at the world through aloha. We do not have to split the room anymore. We are in this together. We are all one canoe, island called Earth. This is Hawaii. And so, with Aloha, it's no longer giving and taking as much as it is about giving and receiving. Many of us have not learned how to receive yet. And perhaps that is our lesson. In 1917, our queen, Lili Ookalani, shared this thought with us as she recognized the seasons were changing then too. To gain the kingdom of heaven is to hear what is not said, to see what cannot be seen, and to know the unknowable. That is aloha. She continues though, which is much more important and appropriate to what we talked about today. All things in this world are two, dualism. But in heaven, there is but one. Yeah, This is Aloha. And she said this many seasons ago. And so where else in the world can we begin the new season but here in Hawaii? Because when it begins with us, it continues with others. Yeah. For this is Aloha. So we say E-A-L-A-E. Please rise. E-A-L-A-E. Hanaho, E-A-L-A-E. 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 Rise up, waken to the new season. It begins with us. You are me, I am you, we are them. Aloha, aloha, aloha. E-A-L-A-E. Let us pray. Close your eyes. O kamalohia no me oi ku umalohia paoloa. Kamalohia o ka i o au no kamalohia. Kamalohia no na va pao no ke va ama o mau lo aku ha vi aku wau i ka u ye vai no a ole aka kamalohia vale no o kamalohia no ka i peace be with you the peace I leave with you not the world's peace but my peace the peace of I aloha 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 o kamalohia no me oi aloha Emma Hala. Thank you.